I'm Connor Underwood. I'm a postdoc working with Louise Parr Brownlee at the University of Otago. The field I'm working in at the moment is uh, the field of Parkinson's disease neuromodulation. Um, so we're trying to uh, develop new therapies to, to improve symptoms in Parkinson's disease. We're using optogenetics because Firstly, this is the way the field is going. Um, so electrical stimulation is really quite crude. Um, when you stick an electrode in the brain and uh, pass an electrical current through it, you stimulate a whole bunch of stuff, kind of non-specific, non-selectively. So with optogenetics, we can selectively target specific cell types. And so this is really important for the progression of the field, the field of neuromodulation generally, um, because the suite of side effects that you might experience with neuromodulation can be put down to non-selective stimulation of different cell types. We're using optogenetics because we want to selectively stimulate excitatory cells in the thalamus. One way that we can selectively target excitatory versus inhibitory cells is we can use vectors, AAV or lentiviral vectors, that express the, the, the transgene, the light-gated ion channel, the channel rhodopsin, uh, under the control of a specific promoter for excitatory cells. So going into this study, the lab had published a paper where they'd stimulated thalamus cells in Parkinsonian rats for a few minutes and found improvements in fall limb function. Uh, that's great, but ultimately they've only stimulated for two minutes. And for a therapy to be effective, it needs to be effective for months to years in patients. So to test this hypothesis, we really needed technology that would allow us to stimulate in the same animal continuously for weeks to months. And you really can't do that with a conventional tethered system. We really had a need for an implantable system that could give us continuous stimulation reliably. There's a few other technologies on the market that can provide wireless optogenetic stimulation, but they do so via a battery that's implanted on the head and it's not rechargeable. And so you, you can provide wireless optogenetic stimulation but you can't do so for weeks to months. So for us that really wasn't an option because we really wanted to stimulate for weeks to months. I think the ability to provide stimulation with a rechargeable device is absolutely essential for researchers doing preclinical work when they want to test a new method of neurostimulation with the view of taking that to large animals and patients subsequently. Our experience with the Kaha telemeters is they provide really reliable stimulation. Once stimulation is up and running and you've recovered the animal from surgery, once you turn the stimulator on, it will stay on as long as you want and will provide continuous stimulation until you turn it off.